be a lot of kids playing and a lot of kids playing their hearts out. Nobody dropped their head, everybody stayed focused. Seeing the camaraderie of everybody pulling together, I'll never forget this moment. The Cyclones take the field on a sunny Saturday in September. Four touchdown underdogs to the Hawkeyes. Heavy favorites to fall to their in-state rivals for the 16th year in a row. Most fans at Kinnick Stadium find little reason to expect anything to the contrary. But this will soon become a day to expect the unexpected. Beat the Hawks! Beat the Hawks! Beat the Hawks! Beat the as we get set to get this one underway. On the near side is Matt Stockdale, Doug Miller at the top of the field, Khalil Hill in the middle, and Jamie Cole to kick it off for Iowa State. He approaches the football, this game is underway, a deep kick, a driving kick, sails well out of the end zone, and Iowa will start at its own 20. And the defense sets the tone early. Berger is the fullback in this alignment. First down play from the 20, McCann hands it off to Betts. He's caught and thrown for a loss in the backfield, back at the 19-yard line. Jesse Beckham in there for Iowa State, and Reggie Hayward and a loss of a yard on the play. At their own 19-yard line, ball game just underway, and here's a rollout by McCann. He looks, he throws, and it is a diving attempt, but it falls incomplete off the hands of Barton at the 31-yard line, and it'll be third down and 11. Third down and 11 for Iowa. Two speedy receivers out left and right. And back to throw. McCann throws underneath. He makes the catch. It's Hill breaking a tackle and stumbles at the 24. And he's shy of a first down by six yards. It's a gain of five. Iowa will be forced to punt. Defensive series, though, to start. And the snap. It's blocked. Iowa State blocks it. And it's rolling free. Picked up by the Cyclones inside the 15-yard line. A block kick by Iowa State, and Ryan Sloth was the man who finally came up with it. Iowa State will have it at the Iowa 13-yard line. Well, it started out with a high snap, and Jason Baker had to go high in the air to come down with it. Iowa State had some good penetration from the defensive left side. The Cyclones then run twice with not much success, setting up a big third down play. I was looking for the pass right now on third down and nine to go. And here's Bandauer on the delay to Davis, tries to get outside, cuts it back at the five, at the one, he is in, touchdown! Iowa State gets on the board on the draw play to Darren Davis. He takes it in from 12 yards out for the score. And it is six to nothing. Everybody looking past, including us and including Iowa. And Darren picked his way through to get into the end zone. It was not a wide open play. No, he really did a nice job running through some tackles. But I think that's a great call because we talked. I talked a moment ago about passing the football on running situations. That means you've got to run it on some passing situations too. It'll be Jamie Cole trying to make it a seven nothing ball game. The kick is up. It is good. It's seven to nothing. Iowa State on top with 12-18 to play in the first quarter. And once again, Cole kicks it deep. Cole approaches the football again, kicks it deep again, sailing it once more out of the end zone. So it'll be brought back to the 20-yard line. Then it's back to work for the defense. Motion to the near side. McCann on the draw play, and Tyne is hauled down for no gain on the play. Good pursuit by the Iowa State defenders. It's Hayward and James Reed on the stop for the Cyclones. But they're in Iowa State territory at the 33. And here's the play off the left side. A loose football, and Betts falls on top of it. Hayward got him from the back side. The ball popped free, but bounced right back to him, and he fell on top of it. Loss of a yard on the play. Boy, that is really fortunate for the Hawks in that particular play. Great speed by Reggie Hayward. A near miss for the Cyclones, so the defense stays on the field and stays strong. Cyclones 
Showing a blitz, here's McCann, they pick it up, he steps up in the pocket, he's thrown down at the 41, another loss of a couple of yards, a sack by Jesse Beckham that time, and James Reed there also. A good coverage downfield because McCann had enough time if his initial receiver had been open to deliver the football. Split left and right, then the back split on a third down and about 13 to go. Here's McCann dropping back, has time, delivers, and it is incomplete. Well covered by Dewan Anderson and the pass nowhere near the intended receiver. But Iowa State goes three and out and has to punt it back. And there's another big break of coming. This one is high and spiraling deep. Going to Hill who fields it, fumbles the football! Iowa State's on top of it! Dewan Anderson has it at the 30 yard line. Khalil Hill came up and made a critical error there by not chasing the football once he fumbled it. He just kind of stood there and Juan Anderson jumped on top of it. It really looked like he may have lost that ball for a moment in the sun and as he came up on the football stopped and really wasn't as far up as he needed to be and kind of reached his hands out to catch the ball. And the Cyclones are back in business. 30 yard line of Iowa, first down play and it is a inside handoff to Davis to the outside at the 25 on his feet and tripped up at the 21 yard line a gain of nine they gave it to Darren Davis and then faked the handoff to Burris trying to make it look like the end around play and Davis picked up nine uh, trying to give the Iowa defensive players a lot of different things to think about and slow down their closing speed and closing reaction to the football second and very short and Bandauer pitches to Davis, tries to cut it back, and picks up the first down, driving across the 20, getting to about the 19-yard line. First down, Iowa State on a gain of two by Duran. Davis, the deep back. First down play. Bandauer swings it out. Duran makes the catch, needs a block. He turns the corner at the 15 to the 10, and down he goes, close to a first down. At about the 10-yard line, Duran Davis picks up nine, swinging it out of the backfield is Bandauer, and Stockdale makes the stop on him. That may be a run or maybe a pass. I don't know. Almost threw that one uh, as a lateral. Iowa coming pretty hard that time, crashing from the outside. But that is where the drive stalls, and on comes Jamie Cole. And from 28 yards away, he splits them. It is 10-0 Iowa State, still in the first quarter. Then the Hawks start to move the ball, but the Cyclones keep hitting hard. Time to give it to the fullback Berger, and Hayward has him wrapped up as he lunges forward to about the 32, a gain of three on the play. The option the other way, the pitch out goes to Betts, sweeping the right side. He's hit and dropped on a good defensive play up there from the secondary Parrott, Jason Parrott, to make the stop. And McCann gets the play underway, sets up, he's chased. He is going to be sacked way back at the 31-yard line. Cyclones swarmed him that time, and in there was James Elmore for Iowa State, among others, and at the bottom, James Reed. Well, James Reed really broke it down, first of all, but Iowa State getting good penetration. So the Hawks must settle for a 48-yard field goal attempt, and this time the bounce goes Iowa's way. Post that goes through, hits the upright, and bounces through. So the Iowa State lead is now cut to 10-3, but Darren Davis quickly sends momentum back to the Cyclones. Has everybody in pretty tight. Darren pops through, gets to the 25, to the 30, makes a spin move up to the 35, on his feet to the 37, and a first down. Darren Davis goes for 17 yards. Good running by Darren. That's the end of the first quarter with Iowa State on top, 10-3. Iowa State has two receivers wide to the right side on this first down play from their own 37-yard line. Burris in motion, and the fake, the fake again. They'll throw to Andy. He's got it, the 40-45 midfield, and runs over a tackler as he pulls his way into about the 47-yard line. First down, Iowa State. Iowa State using a lot more deception in the offense so far, Eric. It's the second time they faked the reverse, and Iowa, the backside, Contain person has had to stay right there to make sure that it was not a reverse. Receivers left and right on this second and long situation. Bandauer looks to throw quickly and he hits his man Bradley who fights his way to the 35 and gets the first down. Quick little slant route and Bradley hangs on and picks up the first down at the 35 yard line as Bandauer zipped it in there. A 4-2 sprinter. And he's on the near side. Nine man front for Iowa. Now they back out a little bit. Bandauer looking to throw deep. Zings it out, Gross has it, 
First down, he makes a great catch inside the 25. They're going to give it to him at the 26, actually. As Iowa went for the interception, missed, and Gross, with great concentration, hung on to the football. Matt Bowen saw it sail through him. I don't know how Gross caught it, but he did. And now, and it's not quite a first down. And that sets up a crucial fourth and two. And the Cyclones will go for it. When you're an underdog, you got to take some chances. Fourth down and two for Iowa State. And here's Bandauer faking to Davis, looking to throw to Stansrud. He's got a 20, 15, 10, 5. He's out of bounds at the five-yard line. Pulled up at Big end. He was out there in the secondary. Todd Bandauer lobbed it out. He caught it and rumbles to the five for the first down, a gain of 22 yards. And now it's time to punch it in. Here comes the Iowa Blitz. They give it to Darren, trying to get to the right side. He's at the five and slips down as he tried to cut back. And had he been able to cut back, he'd have been in. Second down and goal at the four-yard line. Got motion to the far side of the field for Iowa State. Here's the fullback, Parmentier. He knocks it down to about the two. Gain of a couple, so it's third and goal at the two-yard line. Everybody up tight. Here's the play. Roll out, Bandauer, throws, and it is incomplete. Flag goes out, we may have an interference call, and let's see which way it's gonna go. Gibson fighting in the end zone, along with Bowen, and let's see what the penalty is. It's on Bowen, I think, but we'll just have to wait till the officials sort it out. Holding on Iowa. That's an automatic first, first down. down. First and goal for Iowa State at the one yard line. And they'll go with three tight ends this time, Iowa State will. And it gives to Parmentier, he dives in, and it's a touchdown! Joe Parmentier over the top! And the Cyclones go up 16-3 with 10-21 left to play in the first half. Well, Iowa State doing a good job at the line of scrimmage right now, Pete. They've, they have taken on Iowa's defensive front, and I wouldn't say that they've outplayed them, but they have certainly held their own, and I think that's a, a win for Iowa State. It is a stunning sight at Kinnick Stadium, and Cyclone fans are loving it. Cyclone! 17-3, Iowa State. And the intensity continues on special teams. Full kicking the other way. He approaches the football. Line drive going deep where it is fielded in the end zone, and Iowa will come out with it, coming out of Stockdale. He's boomed at about the 10, breaks loose though. Comes around to the near side, being chased and hauled down finally at the eight yard line. Swarming Cyclones out there right now, all over the place. First of all, Densmore had a shot at him, then Waters, and then the pursuit really caught him. And the defense keeps Iowa pinned deep. And on first down, the pitch goes to Liddell Betts trying the right side, and Kip King's got him along with Jamarcus Powers at the 12-yard line. In the slot, coming across now to the near side. And here's the draw play to Betts, looking for running room. They come up, try and make the play on him, and Dewan Anderson hammers him as he gets out to the 13. He does not pick up first down yardage. Good popping in there by Durandi, and also Dewan, who really stuck a shoulder on him, and he's down at the 13-yard line. A good defensive series. Once again by Iowa State, they have really been up to the challenge here today. And you just see a more aggressive, faster defense. Then the two teams trade punts, and Iowa State gets the best of this exchange. And kicks it very high. It spirals down where Hill signals for the fair catch, lets it go over his head. It bounces inside the five and is down by Kevin Wilson at about the two. They'll mark it at the three-yard line. Great putting by Gomez as he lofted it up there. It bounced straight up in the air and allowed Wilson to run underneath it. So they've got him pinned inside the five. And then the Cyclone defense flexes its now muscle guy, again. That's sad. He is pulled down as he crosses the six, gets out to around the seven. The Hawks do manage a first down, but then Ab Turner turns in a couple hard hits. Split backs once again. Iowa State. Shoves the linebacker in the gap there as McCann goes back to throw, and he completes it to the tight end for very little, up to the 21-yard line. 
gain of about four on the play. Good coverage by Iowa State once again as the catch was made by Jed Dole. They'll go to the shotgun formation on this third down play. And there's the snap. McCann looking to throw underneath. And he hits his man Casper. And he's wrapped up by Turner at the 25. A gain of three. And that's it. And that was critical that they make that play because Iowa State really had everybody coming right up the middle. Jason Baker will punt. There's the snap. The punt is away. Very, very high this time. And Gross shielding his eyes. Fumbles the ball. And he's on top of the flags go out. I don't think they gave him enough room. Even though he didn't signal for a fair catch, you still have to give him two yards. And the guy ran right by his left shoulder. And two flags came out. I don't think there's any question it's going to be against Iowa for interference with the ability to make the catch on a punt. And I think he was on top of the football anyway. He did a good job of getting back on top of it. But boy, that sun on high punts is going to be a problem for a little bit longer because it's directly over the stadium. With the opportunity to make a fair catch against the kicking team, the two-yard belt was violated, five-yard penalty, first down. And when Iowa State gets the ball back, give the ball back to Darren. Here is the handoff inside. The flag goes out, a big hole for Darren Davis. He's at the 50, 45, all the way to the 42 of Iowa. Flag is out. And we may have an offside on Iowa the way the Hawks lined up. Well, they were had two men lined up in the neutral zone that time. And I'm sure that's what the penalty is going to be. 22-yard gain by Darren Davis, and it's going to be against Iowa offside. From there, the Cyclones mix it up well as the drive continues. And it is caught by Anthony inside the 40. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 38. Actually, they're going to keep the clock moving, which I'm sure Iowa State would like to do here anyway. Burris in motion on this play. And Bandauer on the delay to Darren Davis. He's fighting for yardage. First down to the 30. Darren slugs it out and picks up seven. First down, Iowa State. They keep the football and are in Iowa territory with 2.41 to play in the half. And a first down play with two minutes and 21 seconds left to play in the first half. Bandauer, quick throw again. Caught by Anthony, shielding himself from the defender Stockdale. He's down to the 21-yard line, a gain at nine. A beautiful throw by Todd Bandauer. And Anthony showing once again, he's got the hands to make the catches. And the ability, the knowledge as a wide receiver. Ball at the Iowa 16-yard line on a first down play. It's Burris in motion. They give it to Davis off the right side. Find some room and slices his way down to about the 10-yard line. Close to a gain of six on the play. Darren really feeling his oats here late in the second quarter. Bach is running down now. About 45 seconds to go in a half. Second down play. They give it to Davis, and he shakes one tackle. Cuts back for another pickup down to the six, and I think he got the first down or close to it. Very close to it. Boy, some fancy running again by Darren, and they're going to have to measure, which will stop the clock with 34 seconds to play. Third down, a yard to go. Here comes Iowa with a blitz. Bandauer hands it off to Davis, and he twists away and does not make it. He does not make it, and Iowa State will have 17 seconds to get this field goal attempt off. He was pulled down for no gain, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line with eight seconds left. Five seconds. It's snapped. It's up. It's good! Jamie Cole knocks it through there with two seconds left to play in the first half. And Iowa State ups its lead to 20 to three. They did their job, they got out, they weren't panicky. Had time to even set up and wait a little bit on the snap and get Cole ready and he banged it right through. Well, excellent work that time by special teams. Good job by the offense though, to move the ball downfield. And instead of just running the clock out, which I think almost every Cyclone fan would have been happy with, they were able to get three points out of it. There's Cole ready to kick off again. And he bounces it down the middle. And Iowa covers it up at the 33, and that should end the half. Half comes to a close. Iowa State with a surprising 20-3 lead over the Iowa Hawkeyes in Iowa City. An amazing first half, and the Cyclones hear it from their fans.
but it is still a long way from over. At halftime, Dan McCartney talks about not letting up and playing four solid quarters. His team has the ball first in the second half, and the domination continues. Six with an offset eye in the backfield this time. And about an eight-man front for Iowa. Bandauer throwing deep for Damian Gross. He makes the catch at midfield. A leaping grab over the defender. Slattery back there, but it was not a contest that time as Gross just jumped up, went over him, and made the catch at midfield. First down, Iowa State. Ball at the 50-yard line, and there's motion again to the near side on his first down play. The handoff goes to Darren. He cuts it inside the 45 to the 40, breaks a tackle. He's at the 30, at the 25, the 20, down the sideline, and out of bounds at the 11-yard line. Darren Davis kept going down the sideline, ran out of room, and is out of bounds at the 11-yard line. First down, Iowa State, a gain of 39 yards for Darren. Great blocking at the point of attack once again, and Darren finds his way, then cuts to the outside, ran through a couple of arm tackles. In the secondary, they weren't really able to, to get much on him at all. Gary Moses is in the lineup for Iowa State. Motion again, and a give us to Moses. He cuts it back at the 10 and fights to the five, and on his feet, still driving all the way down to the one yard line. What an effort by Moses. Let's see where they're gonna spot it, right at the one. A gain of 10. He just kept churning, kept driving. A little seam that time on a little cutback by J.J. Uh, Moses. <laughs> Great little run. And Darren is back in the tailback. First and goal. And they'll send a man in motion to the wide side of the field. It's Parmentier diving. Touchdown again. Touchdown, Iowa State. Joe Parmentier goes over from a yard out. <laughs> It is 26 to three, Iowa State on top. What a drive. 80 yard drive in about five plays. They just went right down the field. Every play a successful one. And I think if you could give them a, a passing grade on that, maybe A plus plus. Extra point attempt coming up for Jamie Cole. It's down, the kick is up, it is good. It's 27 to three, Iowa State leading Iowa. 12.57 to go in quarter number three. Iowa tries to answer with a drive of its own, but once again, the Cyclone defense stiffens. Second down play, and it's the option of the near side. Pitch back goes to Betts, looking for running room. He's upended at the 41, a loss of a yard on the play. Breon Ansley up to make the stop for Iowa State. McCann looks around, might be changing the play. Third and 15, and McCann has time. Sets up in a pocket, throws. It's caught underneath by Berger, and he's upended at the 41-yard line, a gain of four. Hansley again up to Next. make the stop. And when Iowa State gets it back, Darren Davis helps dig him out of a hole. Morris in motion, and to give us to Darren Davis, bucking for yardage, and slides out to the 10, fighting his way for three yards. Offset eye in the backfield with Burris. Playing much more in this ball game in motion to the wide side of the field. Here's Bandauer off to Darren Davis. Makes a cut. He's in the secondary. He's at the 30 yard, or not just shy of the 30 yard line, out to the 28. But it's plenty for the first down as he picks up 18 yards on the carry. They're going to mark it back now to the 27, but it's still a first down. Here's Burris again in motion. And on first down, it's Darren again at the 30. Gets a block. He's up to the 36-yard line. Picks up nine more, and he's just shy of a first down. Well, you can tell which team right now is in a real rhythm offensively. Iowa State is moving the football. Finally, Iowa finds the end zone, but the two-point conversion point fails conversion thanks to a nice Iowa play by Dustin Avey. Throw. Rolls right, throws, knocked away by Dustin Avey. Dustin so the Cyclones still lead big, 27 to nine. No, the score holds at 27 to nine. And when the Hawks get it back, that's when the Cyclone D slams the door on any hopes for a comeback. Three, here's McCann dropping to throw. He's blitzed, he's caught, he's down. Birchka came knifing up the middle and gets the sack. He and Jesse Beckham, Iowa State has played a little bit softer coverage. They've been playing a lot of Deep drops in there with their linebackers. This time they send the linebackers on a blitz. They're set in the eye formation. On a third or first down play, the given a backfield bets caught and thrown down. A loss on the play. Dave Birchka wading through blockers makes the stop. And it's a pickup 
on the loss of about two yards. But this will be a shotgun formation. And McCann gets a snap, fakes the handoff, throws, it is incomplete. Good pursuit to the quarterback by Hayward, and he had to throw it too quickly, and the pass falls incomplete. And that brings the third quarter to a close with Iowa State leading 27 to nine. And the Cyclones plan to finish strong in the fourth. And they've been working off play action on third down, but I don't think they're gonna be running the ball, so they might just disdain the fake here. It is play action, back to throw, steps up in the pocket. He is caught and dropped, a sack back of the 25 yard line. And it's Jesse Beckham again for Iowa State. Big sack for the Cyclones. Well, Iowa State's defense comes through once again. Time to work on the clock, and Darren Davis works it well. There's a swing pass to Darren Davis. He one-arms it upfield to the 35, to the 40, and to the 45, to the 48-yard line before he stopped. Darren swinging out of the backfield, takes it upfield on a... Good effort once again. That's a nose down Iowa State. The tackle made from the far side of the field. They had to come over McCracken to get him. Andre Lee back in the ball game. He's in the offset eye for Iowa State. And to give us to Darren Davis trying to be safe about it. He does pop up to the 40 yard line. Now to the outside, the 45 to midfield, 45. And run out of bounds at the 40. What a first down, I think. He's right on top of that marker. He needed 26 and that is exactly what he got. What a move he put on a defensive back for Iowa as he came to the sideline, he turned him around, and now half the measure. Well, Darren really is gassed right now, but what a great run by Darren Davis. They'll stretch out the chain, and it's a first down for Iowa State. And check out this sight. Early in the fourth quarter, Cyclone fans celebrating. <laughs> while the black and gold head for the exits. While back down on the field, the defense does more damage. Well, Iowa up to the line of hurry, throwing again, and it is incomplete, juggled on the out route. Powers on the coverage. Once again, Iowa out of the I formation. And rolling out left, McCann pumping deep. He's got a man out there. And it is caught in an incomplete, knocked free by Dewan Anderson. Oh man, a catch was made by Casper and Dwan knocked it free as he was going to the turf. Lines up with split backs this time on third and 10 at the 48 yard line of Iowa State. Back to throw McCann, looping it, caught, thrown for a loss. Back at the 46 yard line, his arm went up, they almost knocked it free, but he loses back to the 46 yard line of Iowa. Iowa State. Setting up defensively, here's the pass by McCann. He looks, he throws, it is incomplete. Anderson, now a flag goes out. Oh man, well, uh, three late flags, they all come out. First down play, McCann straight back to throw again. Sets up over the middle, caught. Not much of a gain though, good coverage by Iowa State. Takes it to the 39, a gain of four. Here's McCann, setting up, throws, it's knocked down, incomplete, Chinichibi jumps up and flushes the ball to the ground. They line up with split backs, here comes the blitz, McCann drops back, tries to run, lobs it out to the left side, caught by the tight end, he's down, they don't make it at the 44-yard line. Dustin Avey comes up to make the stop, everything was well covered, and it's a gain of only four. And when Iowa State has to give it back, Gomez pins him way back again. There's a booming kick by Gomez. It sails down to about the five and rolls laterally to the three, to the two, and it's down. What a punt by Carl, Bo Carl Gomez. He just exploded it off his foot and yet was able to get it to drop inside the 10 yard line. And then, more defense. And it is the fake on the draw, back to throw. McCann flushed out of the pocket, running for his life. They've got him, a huge loss. <laughs> Once again, Jesse Beckham way, way back at the 27 yard line. A huge play by Beckham again, and he's showing his speed out there today, Eric. A long count here, drops to throw. Still dropping, now sets up, shoots it out of the backfield, caught out of there by 
Berger looking for running room. He's caught by Beckham from behind at the 33-yard line. Jesse Beckham again. Fourth down for Iowa. Back to throw. McCann has time. And it is almost intercepted by Jamarcus Powers. The ball goes over to Iowa State at the 42-yard line. He jumped in front of Umini and almost came up with the interception. And with 2.57 to go, the Cyclones send the offense on, leading 27-9. Well, what a watershed victory here, I think. If Iowa State hangs on, and I'm sure they will at this point, Iowa State has performed exceptionally well. Iowa State with the ball at the Iowa 33-yard line. Give it to Darren. Darren at the 30, driving forward, still on his feet, all the way to the 27-yard line. About to snap a 15-game losing streak out of the Iowa Hawkeyes in a big way. And a road losing streak going back about seven years. There's the give to Darren again, and he's caught as he gets down close to the 26-yard line. And the celebration is about to begin in very chilling fashion. And in the final minute, one more reason to cheer as Darren puts it on ice. And 107 to play. Davis with a handoff, and he drives forward and picks up, I think, the first down at the 21-yard line. And first down, Iowa State. Gain of five by Darren Davis, and boy, that all but finishes everything. Now, Darren with five more yards, and Iowa State's going to win this game with a minute two to play. And they are a happy bunch of Cyclones celebrating on the field. They've doused Dan McCarney. And how good must he feel? I don't think I've ever been happier for a guy, to be honest with you. Uh, you're right. I, I just i am so pleased for him and his staff. And they've got everybody up tight. And there goes Bandauer down to a knee. 27-9 will be the final score. And not only did Iowa State win this game, Eric, you look up on the statistical sheet and everything else, they wound up really dominating the line of scrimmage. Oh, well, that's something I didn't really think would happen, but I, I really believed Iowa State defensively could match up a lot better with Iowa than they matched up last week with TCU. But Big Daddy Damian <laughs> Gibson right. out right now, leading the cheers. The clock runs out, and this one is over. Iowa State has upended the Hawkeyes. 15 years of frustration go out the window on a sunny afternoon in Iowa City. It is 27-9, the final score, and... The Cyclones are a happy bunch, and boy, do they deserve this one. You have to control the line of scrimmage uh, to have a chance to win games like this. Iowa State, I thought, was better than Iowa in every phase of the game today. Maybe not a lot better in every phase, but every single phase, Iowa State was better. Cyclone fans are swarming around the team right at midfield. Yeah, they, they're going to celebrate for a long while out there before they leave. They won't stop here. It is a super cyclone celebration right in the middle of Hawkeye country.
would have been shocked if we didn't play good. Uh, whether the score could have been like that, I don't know that in 100 years I could have envisioned that score over here against a tremendous tradition, traditional program like Iowa. But I just really would have been shocked if we didn't come out and play good. I, it's the way the kids play today like they practiced all week. The whole week, guys had a different attitude. Nobody dropped their head. Everybody stayed focused and went out here and played a game, a good game today. I just uh, want to... Uh, let uh, everybody know how much we appreciate the support we've gotten. The Iowa State fans have been phenomenal, been through some a lot, a lot of tough times. And, and we brought this one home for our fans. And uh, I'm just really, really proud of my coaching staff and players because the kids were ready to play, and they sustained it. And I never saw them flinch. Iowa came back made some good plays. Uh, there was a little adversity, obviously, like every game. But uh, they just kept their head straight and their vision forward, and they stayed focused and made the plays. I'm really happy for them. I think this win, it's not, a, you know, the season isn't over for us. Uh, we still got a lot of games left, but this is a great feeling. You know, we haven't beat them in 15 years or whatever, and uh, but we're going to celebrate and move on, I guess. I don't think I could ask for anything more. I mean, this is great. This is fantastic. Unbelievable. I can't describe it. It's just unbelievable. I mean, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for us. I'm so happy for all Cyclone fans. I stood there and looked around. Uh, I watched our fans. I watched our team, my teammates. I watched the coaches. Uh, it was it was one of those things that I'll always treasure, uh, seeing the com camaraderie of everybody pulling together. Um, I'll never forget, forget this moment. When we built our new Jacobson building, Gene built some beautiful new trophy cases. And frankly, other than uh, Troy Davis's trophies, there isn't anything in there having to do with football. And finally, we got something to take home. It's a great feeling. I know this is a big win from him, but. He's going to be excited and no telling what he's going to do when he get back home. <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he can take care of himself. <laughs> Pass for you, Ben. Pass for you, Ben. Pass for you, Ben. Pass for you, Ben. My roommate, Mark Cortez, is home. He, he, Tezzy was our inspiration today. It was one of the uh, most emotional things I've been around. We went up to the hospital to see him yesterday. His career is over. Uh, he tore a, t a patella tendon in his, under his kneecap. And... Uh, uh, we were in the room about 30 seconds, and he started crying, and we started crying. Uh, it was real, real hard, and not because he's in pain or because he's had four or five operations, because he could not be with us today. Uh, so he wrote a letter to the team, and uh, I read it to the kids before the game and uh, read a lot of it at halftime again just to him to remind him. A lot of the kids dedicated this game to Mark Cortez today because uh, his career is over. He told me not to open it until Saturday, and I opened it this morning and uh, cried like a baby because, uh, you know, he's talking about uh, giving a gift given, you know, the gift of playing football and cherish every moment because you never know when it's going to be a last. And uh, I think we did today. And, and, you know, we played for him and he'll always be in the huddle with us. And he was, he was in the huddle with us today. We got a good friend, uh, Mark Cortez, back at home. And uh, he, he got injured last weekend. And, uh, you know, uh, he gave it all for this team. And uh, I just can't explain uh, the feeling this team has towards that individual. Everybody say we know if it was, he was here he would be the same way and everybody dedicated this game to him there's nothing you can say about mark cortez but he's he's one of the toughest people i've ever met in my life and this one's for him and this is for my dad and my mom and all the fans out there that always believed and you know they they deserve it they deserve to feel good about being a cyclone
coming out. Appreciate it, Nick. Whacking, that's all? Yeah. One shot? Nobody in the way? What's that final score today? 27 to 9?